Judges chapter 14, thank you for the, the wonderful singing and music and best of all the spirit that we felt. If I were to ask you to name the strongest character in all the Bible, I would say that most of you would name the man we're going to look at this morning. It's found in Judges chapter 14. His name is Samson. He's one of Israel's judges, and I would dare to say that most of, if not all of you, know the story of his life. Uh, a lot of times when we speak of Samson, we, we preach about a man who uh, wasted his life. Yeah. We preach about a man who failed in his calling to lead God's children of Israel. But this morning, I want to look at his life from a, a different angle. I want us to focus our attention upon, of all things, a simple riddle that he told. So if you have your copy of God's Word, stand with me as I, I read. We're going to look at the first 14 verses. The Bible says, And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. And his father and mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? Or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother and he gave them and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So his father went down unto the woman and Samson made there a feast for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you if ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. But if ye cannot declare it to me, then ye shall give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. And here it is. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. Now this morning I want you to remember that riddle because that is going to be the basis of our message today. Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong, something sweet. Let's pray. God, we love you, Lord. We thank you for your spirit that we felt this morning. Thank you for those who have come this morning. God, you know each and every need, each and every uh, life that's presented here. I pray that you would be with them. If there's one here who doesn't have a personal relationship with you, God, I pray that you would convict their hearts. God, I pray if there's a Christian here who's lost the joy of their salvation, God, I pray they would find it. Lord, if there's a Christian here with a, a heartache or a burden, God, I pray that the message this morning would, would speak to hearts. We love you and we thank you for being in our presence. Help us to never take that for granted. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In chapter 13 of Judges, we find that the Bible says the children of, evil, children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so the Lord did what He always did. If they were evil... He would punish them. He would usually bring a nation to come in, an enemy nation, and they would rule over them. That's what we find here in chapter 13. The Philistines have come in, and they have been ruling over Israel for 40 long years. And at the end of this 40 years, God has decided to raise up another judge who will lead them out of bondage and rescue them from the Philistines. But the Bible says this judge was a, a little bit different than the others. The Bible says he was a Nazarite from birth. That meant three things, basically. He could not touch a dead body. Anything dead, he could not touch. Number two, he couldn't drink wine. And number three, he couldn't cut his hair. 
So now we come to the 14th chapter and Samson, this judge of Israel, is now old enough to look for a wife. And so he goes down to a place called Timnath to find his bride. And as we read, we saw his parents are greatly troubled about this. The main reason is because Timnath is a city in the Philistines. Meaning, he's wanting a wife who's a pagan. He's wanting a wife who worships idols. He's wanting a wife who wants nothing to do with the God of Israel. And I'll say there real quick, be careful who you pick to be your mate. If they don't wind up loving Jesus like you do, they may not be the one. And I'm telling you, this story couldn't look more wrong from the start. But what they didn't know is that verse 4 says this, that all of this that's taking place was of the Lord's doing. That God, in His wisdom, is orchestrating these events behind the scenes. So with that as our backdrop, I want you to look with me. It's three simple little truths that take place right here in this 14th chapter. First of all, I want you to notice and look at the roar of Satan. The roar of Satan. See, in this story, as Samson's on his way to Timnath, the Bible says in verse 5 that a young lion roared against him. Now understand that that word young does not imply that the lion was weak does not imply that the lion was feeble. What it's telling us is that this lion was in the prime of his life. He's young, he's strong, and he's coming after Samson to devour him. But how many of you know that that lion bit off more than he could chew? For he wasn't attacking just any person walking along that path, was he? Because Samson's about to do an amazing thing. The Bible says that as that lion comes at him, he grabs that lion and the Bible says, rinse him. The word rent means to tear something in two. I like to think when he grabbed that lion by the jaws, he ripped him right down the middle. You think once Samson grabbed hold of that lion's mouth, that lion thought, "Uh uh-oh, something's different about this guy. This line's never run into someone so strong before. And by the way, on a side note, I don't think when you looked at Samson, you would see rip-roaring muscles like you do when you look up here at me. You know, it's sad when everybody laughs. But I don't think he was a walking atlas. Or when you saw him, you said, man, look at that bodybuilder. Because the only unusual thing that made Samson stand out was his long hair. In my opinion, if he looked like some muscle-bound weightlifter, then the Philistines would have never had to ask, what is the secret of this guy's strength? But here he is, tearing this lion in two. The Bible says like a kid. That word kid means a young goat. Now, as weird as this may sound, did you know that still to this day, over in Palestine, in the Middle East, there are people who for sport try to show their strength by taking a young goat and will attempt to tear it literally with their bare hands. Even today. But Samson took that young lion, tore him in two, left his dead carcass lying there in that Middle Eastern sun to bank, to bake. But the point I want to make is this. Any man or woman who sets out to serve God, sooner or later, get ready, you're going to be attacked by a roaring lion. Peter tells us that Satan walketh about as a what? A roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And any time you set in your heart to do what God wants you to do, It's the devil's business to do everything he can to disrupt your life. If Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, and you're going to serve him, and you're going to live for him, then be on guard, because Satan is seeking after you. I mean, look here, here's Samson, the next deliverer of Israel, a Nazarite set apart to do God's work. Do you think Satan knew that? Do you think Satan knew that he was to lead Israel? Of course he did. And Satan wants to destroy him. Let me ask you this question. Why didn't that lion attack Samson's parents? 
The parents were out in front of them. They came across that lion first. He was in their path first. Why didn't that lion roaring against them? Here's why. Because God didn't choose them to lead Israel. He chose Samson. He was God's man. And just as Satan has set his sights on him, laying low in the brush, ready to pounce, understand he has set his sights on you, hoping you will fall. No man, no woman in their own strength is any match for the devil. But thank God the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Our lion can take care of that roaring lion any day of the week. And that's the secret to victory. Don't do it and try to go on your own. Don't fight the devil in your own flesh. Paul said, go in the name of the Lord and the power of His might. So understand right off, there is a lion watching God's people, waiting to pounce on you at a time of weakness. So first of all, we see the roar of Satan. But I noticed the second thing here, and it's what I really want to talk about today, and that is the, the riddle of Samson. See, we now move forward to a wedding that's taking place. It's Samson's wedding. He's decided to marry this pagan girl from Timnath. Now understand, weddings back then aren't like our weddings today. Weddings in Bible times lasted for a week, a full week. There would be food, there would be games, there would be festive activities. And on the last day of the week, the couple would join in marriage. Now aren't you parents glad today it's only one day and you can get your kids out of the house? Well, at the beginning of this marriage week, Samson challenges 30 men to, of all things, a riddle. Now you think a guy that's that big and strong, you might have a wrestling match or something like King of the Hill or arm wrestling, but no, he, he wants to challenge them with a, a riddle. And if they can answer this riddle, he would give them 30 pieces of clothing. Now, in all reality, there was no way they would guess what this riddle was. Because it had to do with him killing this lion, and, and no one saw him do it. So they, they basically had no chance at guessing this. Knowing this, Samson gives them full seven days to give them the answer. The Bible says after three days, they give up. They can't get it, so they devise a plan. What they did, they would go to Samson's wife. And they told her, you get the answer from him. So she goes to Samson and verse 16 says this, And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth the riddle unto the children of my people and hast not told it to me. Verse 17, And she wept before him seven straight days. Yeah, you're getting the picture, aren't you? <laughs> While the feast lasted, she wept seven straight days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, I love this, because she lay sore upon him, and she told the riddle to the children of her people. <laughs> he says, enough already, I can't take any more. Those words, because she lay sore upon him, literally means she was tormenting him with her nagging. And all the men of God said, don't do it. <laughs> she turned on the tears and nagged him into submission. So he tells her, and in return she told those 30 men. And here we come on the seventh day. Verse 18 says, those men come marching up to Samson and they said to Samson, Samson, what's sweeter than honey and what's stronger than a lion? Now let me ask you, you think Samson knows how they got that answer? Oh, he knows. You say, how are you so sure he knows? Because at the end of verse 18, he says probably the most degrading comment ever made to a wife in all the Bible. He tells those men... If ye had not plowed with my heifer, <laughs> ye had not found out my riddle. You get that? I don't know why he's clapping. <laughs> if you had not messed with my female cow, none of this would have happened. Any of you ladies ever got a Valentine's card with the word heifer in it? If you have, I bet it's the last time. <laughs> 
But the Bible says Samson leaves in a rage. Doesn't even take his wife with him. He goes back home. And the chapter comes to an end. But, but here's what I want you to remember. Samson had taken that lion. He had, he had ripped it apart. He, he left it there in the hot sun. No doubt after he had left, the, the animals and the wild beasts came and, and ate the meat off the bones of that dead lion. And, and after time, in the bones of that lion, the Bible says came a swarm of bees and they made a, a honeycomb in the carcass of that lion. And the Bible says when Samson came back through that area, he found that honey in the lion and he ate the honey. Yeah. I'm saying I kept reading that and I started thinking about that and this really... This really blessed me. You ever read something and just jump out and just bless you? Think of this. That ferocious lion wanted to eat Samson. But now Samson is eating from that ferocious lion. And from this experience came this riddle. Out of the eater came forth meat. And out of the strong came forth sweetness. Here's what I want you to get. Every one of us has had to deal with the devil in one form or the other. If you seek to serve God, Satan seeks to devour you. And in the middle of our trial, many of us have said to ourselves, My goodness, this thing that I'm facing, this thing that I'm going through, it is going to destroy me. This thing that I'm battling, it's going to devour me. This circumstance that I'm facing, it's going to kill me. But watch this now. Don't miss this. The truth of the matter is, is that the way God works things out, oh no, it ain't going to eat you up at all. Instead, you're going to end up eating from it. You see, out of the eater comes forth meat and strength. And out of the strong comes forth a sweetness. See, I've seen it too many times. Our people, God's people, they go through a trial. They're facing a sickness. They're suffering a heartache. And they think it's going to end them. But God steps in just in the nick of time. And He gives them a little honey to eat. And as they walk through their trial, you know what I found out? They have one of the sweetest communions with their Heavenly Father that they've ever had. And listen, I don't understand it. Folks, how is it in your toughest times you still decide to make it into church with all your might and when you're blessed, you lift up your hands in praise to God? Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because through our trials, God will strengthen us. And out of that sickness, we come out sweeter than we were before. It's always been that way for the Christian. Remember the story of Joseph? He was sold into slavery. Never to see his father again. But you move forward a decade later, there he's standing before those brothers who sold him into slavery. And now he's second in command in the mighty nation of Egypt. I thought if the devil ever said to Joseph, Joseph, I'm going to devour you. Your family hates you. They don't know where you are. You were God's man, but I've got you marked. I'm taking you out of your own land, out of your own environment. And when I'm finished with you, I will have eaten you up. But it was an all said and done. The Bible said he stood before his family and said this. You meant it for evil. But God, he meant it for good. And I believe old Joseph could have said... Out of the eater came forth meat. Yeah. And out of the strong came forth a sweetness. Here's old David. He's anointed king of Israel. You know for the next nine years he's on the run for his life. I mean he's the king. And yet we find him hiding in caves. Running for his life. People are trying to kill him. You think the devil ever whispered in his ear? Yes, I'm king you are. I'm going to devour you, David. You know what the Bible says David did? In that dark, lonely dungeon of a prison? The Bible says that 
David encouraged himself in the Lord. Paul said, I've been whipped 40 times, save one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times shipwrecked in perils of water. In perils of robbers, mine, mine own countrymen, heathens, wilderness, sea, sea, false brethren. I've been beaten with a cat of nine tails. All those scars on his body. No wonder he could open his cloak and say, I bear in my body the marks of the cross. And I bet old Satan must have said to Paul, Paul, I'm going to devour you. You are one of the top men of Israel. And you've chose to follow Jesus. I'm going to eat you up. What do you think about that, Paul? You know what Paul said? None of those things move me. Out of the eater comes forth meat. And out of the strong, something sweet. What about you this morning? You say, well, I can't live like this. It's too much to handle. The eater's after me. He, he wants to devour me. I want you to know we need to get our eyes off our circumstances. And get our eyes back on God. He's where you get your strength. He's where you get your sustenance. C.S. Lewis said this. I love this quote. He said, when you have nothing left but God, you soon become aware that God is enough. (laughs) So we see the roar of the lion. We see the riddle of Samson. Thirdly, we see the reward from the struggle. So we now move forward to chapter 16. Samson is bound. He's blind. His head's been shaved. He's disgraced his family. He's disgraced his nation. Disgraced his God. Looks nothing like his former self. First verse 25 tells us that all he's good for now is is Philistine entertainment. They make sport of him and make fun of him. He's at the lowest point of his life. He is the laughing stock of Israel. But the Bible says in verse 28 that Samson called unto the Lord and the Lord heard him. Aren't you glad no matter how low you get in life, how many mistakes you've made in life, you can still call on the Lord and the Lord hears you? And he says, oh Lord God, remember me. And strengthen me only this once that I may take vengeance on the Philistines. And God heard his prayer. You know the story. As he pushed those pillars and the whole place came down. It it killed the Philistines but also killed Samson. The Bible says although Samson died he killed more of the enemy at that moment than he did in his whole life. You may say, well Will, I thought you said there was a reward For his struggle. What's the reward? I mean, he just died. Well, the reward is found over 3,000 years later. When the writer of Hebrews, in chapter 11, of all places, moved by the Holy Spirit, begins writing down all the heroes of the faith. And when you get to the 32nd verse of the 11th chapter, of the faith chapter, The Holy Spirit said, write the name of Samson. Write his name down. And his name is listed in the same verse with Gideon, King David, and the prophet Samuel. There are only 16 characters mentioned by name in Hebrews chapter 11. And Samson is one of them. You say, well, my goodness, he made so many mistakes. So the man who had a problem with lies and and lust. And a lot of the Christian community today, you know what they'd done? They'd have thrown him out. But God said, you throw him out, that's all right, I'll use him. And I'll make an eternal record for all to see that Samson is a great man of faith. And I say that today. Because I believe there are some of you here who think God's finished with you. When in all reality, He's just getting ready to use you if you only let Him. There will be problems that arise in your life. 
And the eater will come and he will roar and he will intimidate. But how you handle those problems, knowing that God is in control, is the key. We are human. We want to run from our problems. We say, God, not now. Now's not a good time. I don't want any pain. I don't want any suffering. I can't handle this anymore. Enough is enough. And God says, just hold on. Just trust me. Jesus said, in this life you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. In your life, you will come face to face with the roar of the lion. But God says, it's okay. I'll give you something that you never thought was possible. That very thing that was roaring at you, pretty soon, I'm going to let you reach in and get a little honey. And when it's all said and done, you'll be eating out of the very thing that was trying to eat you. A man by the name of Earl Lee, he went to Russia in 1991. He said the day that they left America, the front page headline in the American newspaper said that after much fighting in Moscow, Mikhail Gorbachev was out. Boris Yeltsin was in as the new leader of Russia. He said as as our group landed, we could still see the Russian tanks in Red Square in Moscow where they had been fighting and protesting. He said the next morning, it was a Sunday, and we we had the privilege of sharing In the first open service, the underground church was able to hold in Russia after 30 years of meeting in secret. He said the service lasted five and a half hours. He said, but no one noticed its length. Because when God begins to move, and we see the sharing of God's grace to these people, and all they experienced during the persecution, he said, time loses its meaning. So during this service, a pastor was called up to share his testimony and he started by saying he didn't really want to share for fear of getting any glory to himself. But the group of underground pastors wanted his testimony shared with those visiting. So the man stood and he said, I want to start by giving you my life verse. And in broken English, he quoted Romans 12.1. Which says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He then told of how he was saved and called to preach. He said the Russian authorities found out and wanted him to stop preaching and threatened that he would lose his job at the local factory. He refused to stop preaching, even though his church could not pay him a salary, and so he soon lost his job. He said at that time he and his wife had three young children. The authorities arrested him, put him in jail four different times and demanded that he deny Jesus and stop preaching. Each time he refused to deny Christ and pledged he would never stop preaching the gospel. So he was arrested a fifth time. And they told him this time we will make you deny Christ and quit preaching. They brought in his oldest child, and they put her in front of him, and they told him that if he didn't sign the papers that he would stop spreading the gospel, they would literally put hot pokers in both of his daughter's ears and make her deaf, and then they would pull her tongue out and cut it off. He said while standing there looking at his daughter, thinking of the consequences His little girl looked up at him and said, Daddy, don't you ever deny Jesus for me. And he said, I didn't. And they put hot pokers in her ears. And they cut her tongue out in front of her father. They kept him in prison and for six months later, they they brought in his next oldest daughter. Because he wouldn't sign the papers to deny Christ and stop preaching, they did the exact same thing to her. They kept him in prison still longer. He said, after a while, it almost broke me. 
They brought in my third youngest little girl. And they did the same thing to her. He said, eventually, years later, they let me out of prison. Earl Lee said, as I listened to this godly man speak, I noticed there were three adult families sitting together in the front. Someone was facing them, signing to them in sign language. He said, after the five and a half hour service had ended, I asked our interpreter, is that his three little girls, all grown up? Yeah. She said, yeah, that's his three daughters. He asked, can I, can I go and ask them a question? He said, she arranged for us to do so. The signer told them I wanted to ask them a question. They all nodded okay. He said, I asked them one thing. Are you not bitter at God for letting this happen? He said, I can't believe what I saw next. He said, immediately, three sets of hands began to move in unison. And with smiles on their faces, they signed. It was just our reasonable service. God is building up people who will bring glory to him and not glory to themselves. And there are going to come trials in your life. And we have to make a decision. How are we going to respond? One old preacher said it this way. When it comes my time to die, I want to be found with honey dripping from my hands. If you can understand this morning that out of the eater comes forth meat and strength and out of the strong comes forth a, a sweetness, I believe we'll see that the reward of the struggles of this life far outweighs the roar of the old lion. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed.